Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, thank you, Odessa. Thank you, Michal. And uh, good uh, still. Uh, actually, more, uh, good afternoon, colleagues. Now, uh, so I, I was asked uh, 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 to speak uh, about uh, lessons learned from uh, the war uh, in Ukraine uh, and the future of warfare. And, and it's, a, it's a big question. We are in Berlin, so let's start with Clausewitz. And uh, mm, indeed, his famous dictum that uh, war is continuation of policy by other means. And uh, there was a certain Bolshevik leader named uh, Lenin, who was avid reader of Clausewitz. And there is excellent, actually, addition with his uh, extended uh, comments. Uh, and he did one thing. Um, he said, OK, but for, for us, the Bolsheviks, uh, uh, the policy is continuation of war. Uh, and sometimes by all means. And this actually, this is the essence of the Soviet and Russian thinking about international relations. It is, in the end, war of various uh, types with uh, various means. This was further um, developed uh, through uh, the doctrine of General Gerasimov, he published it in 2013. Uh, for the first time, it was used a uh, year later uh, uh, during the annexation of Crimea and uh, and then the, the, the first phase of war in the Western Ukraine. And uh, then it was incorporated formally into the uh, Russian military uh, strategy in 2015. And, and the essence of of this doctrine is uh, that actually war is a non-linear uh, process where the, the um, lines uh, of frontiers, borders between uh, peace and war actually uh, are uh, blurred. And this also was called or is called uh, hybrid warfare or hybrid war. What is important is uh, that uh, in, in this approach, uh, to the, the um, uh, there is a, I would say, continuum uh, from a cognitive to kinetic warfare, and uh, we saw this uh, first phase of the war against Ukraine in that, let's say, cognitive uh, um, domain uh, already around 2012 uh, through a very I would say uh, intensive um, disinformation uh, campaign, uh, which was actually uh, focused on three fronts. First was uh, the Russian public, where Ukrainians uh, were increasingly uh, started uh, started uh, uh, being descri described as a non-nation, uh, fascists, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And 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 this really, I mean. Uh, managed within a relatively short uh, time to change the uh, mental maps of most of the Russian uh, Russian public. And then we are sometimes uh, mm, uh, surprised yeah, uh, in discussions that we see that, that actually there is still relatively high support for this war amongst uh, uh, Russian uh, society. Uh, there was another front, actually, of this cognitive uh, warfare, which was uh, indeed Ukrainians, didn't work, uh, and actually the, the opposite, and, and the war uh, uh, caused sort, sort of a renaissance of of, uh, of uh, Ukrainian nation and uh, uh, Ukrainian uh, Ukrainian identity. And the third front, indeed, it's us and the effort to undermine uh, us in uh, our, in the cohesion of our societies, undermine undermine our our, uh, our um, alliances. So uh, that's let's say the general framework, and I would say also mental framework uh, that 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 I think we should keep in mind when trying to understand what the Russians actually are doing there. The uh, mm, uh, one of the consequence, uh, consequences of the, uh, uh, I would say, almost dehumanization of the enemy, which is another 
uh, another uh, instrument uh, used uh, uh, indeed uh, and achieved uh, through uh, cognitive uh, warfare. Uh, so one of those consequences uh, indeed we see uh, in the total uh, in terms of the total disregard on the part of Russia uh, to humanita humanitarian uh, humanitarian uh, law means uh, um, uh, it's it's almost a total war including against uh, civilian inhabitants war crimes etc cetera, etc cetera. now <clears throat> if we look uh, at, at, at more uh, technical uh, aspects uh, of uh, what we see in Ukraine. Uh, it's also very interesting uh, to, uh, to learn from, for example, uh, the, the very, I would say, accelerated cycle or cycles of, uh, of innovation that Ukrainians actually are, are, are demonstrating in terms of also employing uh, dual use uh, technologies. Uh, uh, indeed, we all are now experts on drones, uh, but it, it is it is very important, uh, very important aspect of this of this of this war. The the way how uh, they, they they are able to uh, integrate uh, various types and generations of of systems and and this is something absolutely unprecedented if you look at the wide scope of systems that actually either uh, still legacy from the soviet times or indeed ukrainian uh, made in ukraine but above all delivered from all uh, parts of the western world it's a huge huge logistics challenge absolutely uh, unprecedented but what we see is uh, uh, that actually they managed to establish indeed with the support of the west quite flexible um, um, networks of logistics uh, repairs etc etc but this is something absolutely absolutely unprecedented and it also actually uh, uh, gives us another lesson which is that we lack interoperability we lack standardization we lack interchangeability uh, in our own systems i give you one example the european defense agency was tasked by member states to procure uh, or to prepare um, framework uh, uh, contracts with industry for joint procurement of uh, 155 millimeter ammunition and there are four uh, type uh, types of systems made in europe uh, polish one uh, slovak french and german operated by ukrainians 155 millimeter. I, 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 I'm no expert in ammunition, so um, I, I thought that, okay, there is 155 millimeter ammunition, one size fits all. It's not, it's not uh, like that at all. I mean, each system has its specifics, so uh, we uh, were asked uh, to um, uh, procure uh, two types of this ammunition for, for four systems. Uh, I, either all up rounds or uh, components and, and each uh, each all up round has the uh, four components so all together and not all producers are able to produce the whole uh, set so to speak so all together we ended up with uh, about 36 lots and now 60 framework contracts you know so standardization interoperability uh, 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 commonality interchangeability is another big lesson for us yeah, uh, because we are liking it still. Now uh, another uh, perhaps I should have uh, put it uh, earlier uh, forward uh, is the uh, quantity quality uh, balance and uh, we see a very high intensity warfare with a lot with a lot of lot of uh, and i would say since i would say in europe since second world war uh, unprecedented consumption of uh, military material ammunition etc et so quantity matters but at the same time uh, we see and i'm back to that innovation how uh, the, the 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 high asymmetry um, quantitative between uh, uh, Ukraine and and Russia can be partially and I'm, I'm afraid only partially out of balance uh, um, uh, uh, through through uh, through quality um, and 
last but not least, and this is I'm going to with, with this I, I'm going to conclude. We see uh, how difficult it is uh, for uh, our defense industry uh, to ramp up uh, production, uh, uh, and now we are in the third. Uh, year of the war already, uh, and the the initial efforts started just a few months after uh, the war uh, uh, began uh, in uh, uh, in 2022. Um, the there are various reasons for for this uh, for this problem, uh, but uh, the first and essential essential is that actually uh, the defense industry, especially. Um, had uh, been uh, mm, for decades, and especially since uh, 2008, uh, the, uh, the global financial economic crisis, um, highly underinvested. So there, there has been a, a, a huge um, defense investment gap accumulated. Uh, and just for illustration, uh, the uh, European uh, Union's member states. Uh, return back onto onto the level of uh, uh, defense spending of 2007 means year before the crisis started only in 2022 yeah, so you can imagine the huge gap in demand uh, then indeed uh, the industry uh, either restructured or went out so uh, Mm, these are still, I would say, initial uh, lessons uh, from uh, the uh, from the uh, war in Ukraine. Uh, I don't know whether I would be able to uh, um, 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 predict the future of warfare, because usually uh, we know that uh, actually preparing for the last war does not work. But at the same time, that's what we have. Thank you very much. Thank you.